Buonasera a tutti. È un piacere avere a TEDx Matera. That's about it for my Italian. So you'll have to use your headphones from now. <laughs> Grazie. So I am very passionate about education. Education and learning. And that's why I chose to work with the Coder Dojo Foundation. The Coder Dojo Foundation supports Coder Dojo, which is a global network of free, community-led computer programming clubs for kids. All around the world, we have volunteers in communities just like Matera, finding free venues, finding technical people to volunteer their time, and inviting children to come for free and explore the creation of websites, games, apps, and all technology. We started in Ireland with one club four years ago, and now we have 700 plus clubs in 57 countries around the world. 92 of these are in Italy. Grazie. <laughs> so I'd like to talk to you about some of the core philosophies of Coder Dojo today. And the first one I want to talk about is girls. So we need women at all levels including the top, to change the dynamic, reshape the conversation, to make sure women's voices are heard and heeded, not overlooked and ignored. So Cheryl Sandberg, the Chief of Operations at Facebook. This is Lauren Boyle. Lauren is 10 years old, and in this photo here, she's sitting with the Prime Minister of Ireland. She's also been named the EU Digital Girl of the Year. The reason for this is Lauren has taken exceptional steps to develop her own website called Cool Kids Studio, where she invites kids to come along to her website and explore healthy eating, exercise, and positive mental health. So why are we using people like Lauren as role models? Why is it so important that these young people are shown to be engaging in computer technology? 13% of computer science graduates are female. This is then naturally reflected in the technology business world, where there's quite low numbers of women in the industry, which is baffling, especially considering everybody uses technology. Everybody, it's not just men who use technology, it's women. And women have even been shown to use technology more than men. So very much we need voices. Also, there's been a prediction that there will be 900,000 jobs in the ICT sector in the EU unfilled by 2020. And we have mass youth unemployment across Europe. So, what do we do? We need to encourage and engage the young women in our communities to work with technology. The main reasons that women and men feel that women don't work in technology are mainly stereotypical and are unconscious biases. The idea that women struggle with mathematical or analytical thinking or that they're just not logical. Fundamentally, this is false, but aside from that, that's not what technology is all about. You don't need to be a maths wizard to be a coder. The most fundamental skills in computer programming are problem solving, creative thinking, finishing projects, working with others, and trying to find the best solutions for moving forward. We all know women are more than capable of these things. So I would like to urge you all to try and encourage any young women in your life to engage with technology. This is so important. If coding is the new literacy, then surely we have to encourage them, or they're going to be left behind. So please, I would ask you all to encourage young women in your lives to engage. Next, I'd like to talk about self-motivated learning. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. W.B. Yeats. So the current situation in majority of education systems across the world, it's based on an industrial model of education. Young people are given standardized testing where they just reiterate information that's been fed to them, and they are, in essence, spoon-fed. 
Ken Robinson says it best. One of the roles of education is to awaken and develop the powers of creativity. Instead, what we have is a culture of standardization, where creativity isn't so much encouraged and often dismissed. <laughs> so at Coder Dojo, the way we like to tackle this is by encouraging young people to take initiative and responsibility for their own learning. So encouraging them to give an input into what it is they want to learn. You want to learn apps? Great. You want to make a website? Fantastic. You want to make modifications to Minecraft? OK, go for it. Mentors will be there to help. Project-based focus, interest-led. So what this means is that when a young person is making a website, for example, we ask them to focus on the subject that's of interest to them, whether it's soccer or music or horses or whatever it is. Make that your website. It's not about the code that you're writing. It's about the overall project. And then often you'll be in a situation and a kid will say, oh, I really want to put videos on my website. So the mentor goes, OK, well, this is how you do that. So that's what we try to encourage, is the young people to drive their own learning. We get them to set goals, complete projects, and present their work to their peers at the end. Anyone working in any kind of field knows that these are really important life skills. And we have mentors on hand, volunteer mentors from the community to provide support and guidance, but not to dictate. So this is Kathleen, and I'd like to tell you a little story about Kathleen. Um, Kathleen and her family are travelers. And Kathleen has, in her life, experienced quite a lot of bullying as a result of this. So what she decided to do to tackle this issue in her own life was she wanted to make a quiz, a game that she could present to her peers and to adults alike in order to get them to reflect on bullying and how best to deal with it. To do this, she chose to use Scratch. And Scratch was developed by MIT as a computer programming language to specifically help young people learn programming. So this is just a small example of self-motivated learning in action and project-based learning. Next, I'd like to speak to you about collaborative learning. Nothing new that is really interesting comes without collaboration. James Watson, the co-discoverer of DNA. This is Sagata Mitra. Sagata Mitra is one of the thinkers who is responsible for the Coder Dojo model as it currently is, as his previous TED Talks and his experiments and work were taken into account when trying to figure out what Coder Dojo was going to be. And what Sagat and Nitra did was working on the theory that young people are more than capable of teaching themselves without adult interference, installed computers in rural areas around the world and just left them there. He just left them there. He uploaded some learning games and things like that onto them and left them. And what he found was that the young people were more than capable of teaching themselves, and even more so, they excelled further than they would have in a school environment. So experiments show that children in unsupervised groups are capable of answering questions many years ahead of the material they are learning in school. In fact, they seem to enjoy the absence of adult supervision, and they are very confident of finding the right answer. So at Coder Dojo, we take practical steps to encourage collaborative learning through group project work, where young people are encouraged to work together on projects, to share the workload, and to present it together. We also encourage youth mentoring. As we all know, the best way to learn is to teach, and this is put into action at Coder Dojo, where older people who have learned a bit more of the content are encouraged and often volunteer to work with the younger beginner students and it's very effective. So at Coder Dojo, we try to inspire a love of learning, a love of self-led learning, a love of working with others. And part of this is a passion for lifelong learning, which is something I feel very strongly about, and I'm going to finish up with this point. Intellectual growth should commence at birth and cease only at death. Albert Einstein. So I'd like us to think about why it's so common for adults when they finish school, they finish university, and they become experts in their field to stop consciously choosing to learn new skills. Often you hear, oh, I can't do that, I could never do that, I'm too old. But it's not true. Adults are actually proven to be 
better learners than children, but for some reason we have an idea that children are learners, adults are teachers. It's not necessarily true. This is Olive Riley. And at the time of her death, Olive was 107 and was the world's <laughs> oldest blogger. So if we take a moment to think about Olive and her life and the changes that she has seen in her life, she's gone from a world where there were no televisions, definitely no computers, to being immersed by technology. And she rose to the occasion. She chose to learn how to engage with technology and not just consume content that's already there, but to actively create, to share her insights and her life with the world. So, with Olive in mind, I'd like to ask a question. Do you know how old I'll be by the time I learn to play piano? The same age you'll be if you don't. From Julia Cameron in her book, The Artist's Way. So with this in mind, I'd like us all to go home tonight when we sit down at our smartphones and our computers and to have a think. Identify a passion, a hobby or an occupation that you've always wanted to take up. And we've been very inspired today. We've had people conquering mountains. We've had people creating new inventions and working to make the world a better place and improve education. There's a number of things. So whether you want to code or you want to climb a mountain or you want to learn to juggle, just start. Search online for a tutorial, guide, podcast, or webinar. We're currently in an era when we can learn anything we want like that. All we have to do is take one small step. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And so I urge all of you to do that. Grazie a tutti per l'attenzione.